Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am so honored today because I have Reverend Dwayne A. Quanama with me. Reverend Quanama is president and CEO of I Have a Dream Home. He is an entrepreneur, innovator, and business professional with over 30 years experience. The I Have a Dream Home movement and mission is to end bias and discriminatory lending practices within the banking industry, which has kept 10 million mortgage-ready home buyers from achieving the American dream of home ownership. The I Have a Dream Home business model and investment strategy has built a pathway to home ownership and generational wealth. Thank you so much for being here. It's a complete honor. And I would love for you to share your journey with us, how you got here today, and then we can dive a little bit deeper. Uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, Reverend Duane Kwamina, I'm the president and CEO of I Have a Dream Home. Um, we are uh, we are an upstart mortgage lending company. Um, uh, we saw a need in the marketplace. There was 10 million uh, mortgage ready home buyers going underserved in America. And we seen a niche market that needed to be served. And we decided to embark on that journey. Uh, how I got there, not being from the mortgage industry at all, actually being uh, from the social arena. Uh, my father was director of direct action and nonviolent education for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, during his tenure with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So I'm kind of like a movement brat, always in the nonviolent movement, always doing social work, trying to develop uh, individuals and communities. And that work uh, led me to work with a gentleman uh, who was in the mortgage business for 27 years and had this idea of starting this movement to uh, address those uh, home buyers that weren't being served. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away and I was left with the reins uh, to continue the movement, didn't want to stop it. And uh, I became president and CEO. And uh, here we are today uh, with some iterations, some name changes, but still the same mission. Uh, I have a dream home is alive and well. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I love the mission that you are on and what had started and transpired and what really drove you to start this mission for being a part of it. Well, um, the gentlemen who started it, they always call on me because um, I have some skill sets. I worked in the law firm for 10 years you know, writing motions, briefs, complaints, et cetera, and having my legal mind on and, and writing business plans as well as my business mind. Um, I'm generally contacted to in the entrepreneurship world to help folks uh, upstart their businesses, whatever. So uh, the uh, gentleman called me and said, I need your help. <laughs> and uh, how can you say no to such a vision? And uh, that's how I got started going to help as I've said, he passed away and uh, uh, we had to keep the movement going and uh, the need is there. Um, you think about it, 10 million mortgage ready home buyers yes. going underserved in America. How could that be? Okay. Um, so there's some work to be done and uh, I'm looking forward to completing the journey um, and doing the best we can. We need more hands. We need more hands on deck. Um, but it's we're starting um and there's others who are working in that uh, arena as well and together we'll accomplish the mission mm, yes and i love the mission and i think it is so important because like you said 10 million home buyers ready to go are being underserved and being able to start to have that movement and realize how important it is for people to have the opportunity and yes. even be being able to build this and continue to build this. So I know you said you need more hands on deck. What are you looking for uh, in order to continue to build such a beautiful mission? Okay. Well, well, what we did in order to, to tackle this humongous uh, issue, uh, let's talk about how we got there in the first place. So we have like our four major banks, Bank of uh, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo. They have all exited the mortgage business. So they they want to go into investment banking. Uh, JP Morgan Chase wants to go into uh, buying up senior family homes and renting them. So they want to become a mega landlord. And um, they don't, there's 10 million folks who want to buy homes they fall in an area where the banks uh, don't service them. Mm. Even though Freddie Mac said, 
on their uh, chart that these folks are capable, ready, willing, and able uh, to purchase homes. The banks still don't want to service them. So we decided to fill that gap in. And when I say all hands on deck, mm -hmm. there's money in the federal government and warehouse lines of credit, et cetera, to deliver that. But you have to have a mechanism in place that's careful, that wants to deliver that and uh, has the, the, the means to do so. So we had to build a structure, which we did. Um, and we went through all the compliance issues and so on and so forth. But now in order to get the car from New York to California, you need gas in the tank. Yes. <laughs> so we uh, implemented what's called a, a regulation CF offering uh, under the CARES Act, under the, excuse me, the um, uh, Jobs Act, uh, which was passed in 2012. It allowed for small businesses to ra raise money from American citizens across the board. That wasn't available before 2012. So now regular everyday individuals can become investors in startups and new companies, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we put together uh, an offering on the regulation CF and partnered with broker dealers and out of Chicago and this capital group with um, Core Connex, who is our SEC FINRA regulated software provider. Everyone has to be compliant and in um, and reg regulated by the Security Exchange Commission and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority called FINRA. So once you put all that together, now you have a five-star hotel. Now you need people to come in and rent the rooms. We call those people to rent the rooms, the investors. Mm -hmm. So the investors come in and there's a $5 million raise that has to take place because in order to get from New York to California in the mortgage world, you have to raise $5 million as a minimum. So once you get the $5 million, now you move into the next threshold of being able to deliver the capital to the community that's needed. And it's, it's a funny mathematical equation because $5 million actually allows you to be able to deliver anywhere from 300 million upwards into the community. So, but in order to, to be able to do that, you have to raise the initial capital uh, which is, in, in my opinion, it's a good stopgap. It's like if you can't raise the initial five million from investor types, uh, then you, you're not communicating, you're not efficient enough to even do this. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't mind that. And um, like I said, we put the structure together, like we have a CFO on, on our team who has 14 CPAs, MBAs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we said like, we can manage the money, we can we we can do everything we're supposed to do in this in this um, business. Now we just have to raise the five million dollars, and that's the Reg CF offer. We have an offering page uh, with with uh, Andis Capital Group. We have an escrow account with in with uh, Enterprise Bank and Trust, a large bank out of Missouri. Um, when the money goes in, it's held in escrow and only used for the purpose of uh, providing these opportunities and mortgages. So I'll stop right there, but um, um, that's why we need all hands on that. We need investor types. Yeah. Uh, we need underwriters, you know, um, and folks that can actually deliver the capital. Uh, we need government thinkers who know how to, to work within the, the government structures, which we, we know how to do that because there's a, a mechanism called the Community Reinvestment Act. Yeah. And, and that act is about $7.7 .7 billion that the federal government has to deliver to the community every year. And it's not being delivered. And the reason it's not being delivered because the vehicles to deliver it are inefficient. And that's why we built the, an efficient vehicle. Mm, I love it. And it really goes back to just what your mission is and being able mm -hmm. to help these individuals, but knowing the parts that need to be bridged together and knowing that there's vehicles there, but we need to 
close that gap to get the vehicle to the homeowners, the yes. potential homeowners that are ready to buy, but just don't have the resources, but being able to pull your resources together of everybody that you do know and knowing and putting it out there and getting your message out there as well of all the different factors that go into building an amazing business, but also having the amazing people there too. And I think it's, you know, it just talks about community. Like to me, that's what stands out, like building this strong community to help more people be part of communities and have their own home and be able to live the life and the dream they want as well. That's the American dream. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's the first pillar of generational wealth building. First pillar of generational wealth building is home ownership. Yeah. That's a foundational piece. Now you have other pillars to hold up the, the, the structure of generational wealth building, but one of the core pillars is home ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It absolutely is. And I would love for you to speak a little bit more about generational wealth, because I think it's something that we don't talk about enough and understanding, like even building the foundation of a home, of course, the home's one aspect. But could you talk about a little bit more of what the other pillars are when it comes to generational wealth? Uh, certainly. So when you when you talk about generational wealth, it's, it's wealth that you can uh, you can build while you're here, but also leave to your family and preferably generations to come, mm -hmm. but at least um, you want to go two generations. <laughs> um, and, and, and if you fail after two generations, then you start over. But you, you need to build enough wealth to at least go two generations. So, you know, home ownership is one pillar of wealth. Of course, you know, folks could start a business and, so, and, and, and build up, you know, resources from a business. Uh, folks can invest in the stock market, which is a pillar and, and have investments uh, in that arena. But you got to know what you're doing because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could also lose in those those vehicles. And uh, but that's a pillar, you know, uh, in, in, in other investment type vehicles are pillars to create generational wealth. Um, the most simplest one to understand, of course, is home ownership, um, because you own your home. You pay for it over 15 years, 30 years. And at the end of the day, if you bought it for and just using, you know, general numbers, say you pay uh, just for the sake of discussion, mm -hmm. $300,000 for a home, $200,000 in an urban setting, uh, $150,000 first time home buyer. And you bought that home and you paid over 15 years or in 30 years or whatever. And the uh, real estate doubles in value. And, mm -hmm. and and sometimes it triples in that. Um, so with that said, and let's take a, a two hundred thousand dollar investment. So now you 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 paid it off, and you want to leave it to your you know children, and now the home is worth six hundred thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Well, that's a good start for a young person coming up to have an asset on the books for six hundred thousand. They can take that asset. They can maintain it. They can take it, put it on the market, create 600,000, and then put another pillar in, start a business. Mm -hmm. They could pay for a college fund that will get them some education to be able to take them to another level, um, which is also a pillar, education. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why you want to own the asset called the home and a pillar, because you're gonna live somewhere. Everyone lives somewhere. You know, and when you're living somewhere, generally you're paying either a mortgage or you're paying rent. Mm -hmm. So why not pay and be paying for an asset that appreciates over time? Um, and then with that said, that's why with J.P. Morgan Chase not lending and wanting to become the mega landlord and mm -hmm. do the rental. At the end of the day, the mortgages or the homes that JP Morgan is going to invest in will belong to JP Morgan. Mm. And it's like, well, that's kind of backwards. <laughs> yeah. So I don't understand that. And I hope the American uh, citizens don't understand that and, 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 and start fighting for the right to have these uh, resources directed towards them so they can be the home buyers. So that's a that's part of the prong of our fight. One of them we got yeah. to we got to make it clear what's taking place, but also mm -hmm. we have to have the all hands on deck to be educated enough to know the difference yes. between 
renting from J.P. Morgan Chase or getting a mortgage from J.P. Morgan Chase, which mm -hmm. they don't want to do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they don't want to do it, then we'll do it. Okay. We'll do it as the American citizens. We'll get 5,000 of us together. We'll put $1,000 together. 5,000 times 1,000 is 5 million. And we'll be the mortgage lender. We'll go to the federal government. We'll take the Community Reinvestment Act dollars. We'll put it back into the community. We'll create the uh, uh, generational wealth by the home ownership component. And then those 5,000 people who invest in there, they become the owners of the corporation as well. So now the residual income that comes from managing and mm. these resources of money becomes part of your generational wealth building foundation as well. Now, if you took 5,000 folks and did that and just say in a, in a vacuum mm. and could deliver $300 million a year, that 5,000 folks, folks that, that delivers about 1,000 homes. Uh, three hundred million dollars, right? Yeah, that doesn't put a dent in the ten million mortgage rate home buyers. No. So, in our lifetime, we can never service that entire population. Mm -hmm. We can only put a dent in it, and we could create a condition where we can put a clean glass next to a dirty glass, mm -hmm. and make the American people see the difference between uh, our proprietary mortgage lending process mm -hmm. and the current lending process or the lending processes that have evaporated because everybody's closed their doors to mortgage lending. And then we have to talk about and talk to our government officials and say, mm -hmm. let's be conscious of what's going on and we can deliver. We're sure we can deliver. Mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can make it happen uh, because we want to. So when you're not making it happen, it's because you don't want to. Uh, and I think the American people will be very clear about it and say, well, if we put that clean glass up and we deliver the first 300 million, mm -hmm. the next 300 million is just right behind it and the next 300 million is right behind it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can expand this way and deliver more per year because it's a lot of work to be done yeah. uh, to deliver uh, those mortgages. But the, 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 the core work, mm -hmm. which is having a market for it is already done. Mm -hmm. It's 10 million <laughs> mortgage ready home buyers today. And it's more than 10, according to Freddie Mac, which is a federal mm -hmm. government agency, right? Um, they are, they say it's about 13 million mortgage ready home buyers under their criteria that's qualified and ready to purchase homes today. And it's like, well, wow. why is it not happening? Yeah, it just seems like it's raising, if anything. But I love yeah. that you're filling that gap of what is possible. And I love the example you used of the glass, like the clear glass and the dirty glass, but like you can see it, even just hearing you say it too, mm -hmm. of what needs to be done and what's possible, but it's like starting. And even though it'll be a dent, it's bigger than nothing as well. And Absolutely. being able to set the path of being able to help homeowners just have a home. It's that generational wealth. It's that safety, it's security. It's being able to have something of their own in being able to create that generational wealth and what can come for the next generations to come as well. Yes. I think that's really important. And I don't think it's talked about enough. Like I had no idea until we started talking about it, uh, to be quite uh, honest, of how many people are eligible, but it's just not having the resources or having the knowledge base too and mm -hmm. bringing knowledge to it of what is possible. And I'm curious because it's been growing and it will continue to grow. What have been some of the main obstacles that you and your team have really faced in being able to build I Have a Dream Home? Compliance. Mm. Compliance. Um, we've we've had two um, uh, two different. I mean, we're, we're relatively a new company, mm -hmm. but uh, we've had uh, Finra look at us twice the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which is a federal government agency again, uh, look at us twice with a microscope. And um, uh, a couple folks, some of our partners are like, oh, FINRA. Uh. <laughs> and I'm like, I love FINRA. Come on. <laughs> I need you. I need you to go in with a fine tooth comb and tell us whatever we're doing wrong because we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we come with integrity. We want to be right. And uh, you know, they walked away with their head down and said, hey, nothing's wrong. <laughs> I said, <laughs> nothing's wrong. Because 
but that's why we have the professionals in place. That's mm -hmm. why we have uh, Core Connex, who is SEC and FINRA regulated. There are software providers because you can't take investment dollars in over Cash App and Zelle and uh, Venmo. Uh, uh, Ven um, you, uh, you can't do it. It's, yeah. it's, it's illegal. You have to take it in through SEC and FINRA regulated uh, devices or mechanisms. So, you know, Core Connex is that. Our broker dealers are SEC and FINRA regulated. We didn't go to a funding portal who's not regulated. We we signed up with a broker dealer who is licensed um, and, and have to maintain the security license. Um, the bank is a multi-billion dollar bank out of Missouri who's the escrow holder. Um, they're uh, compliant and regulated to the hill. Uh, our service of, uh, processors who process payments uh, which is Secure Trans and Art 5 Signal. Secure Trans takes the United States dollars and it's like a credit card system, oh. but they have to be SEC and FINRA regulated as well. It just mm -hmm. can't be anybody. Right. And Art 5 Sigma, they allow for people to pay in Japanese yen, Deutsche Marks or, or cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. uh, but they have to be SEC FINRA regulated so they can convert those dollars and things instantaneously because somebody can come in and invest something, right? and say, oh, we want to invest $5,000. And then tomorrow, the, the currency drops in half and you got to give them $5,000 worth of value, but now it's only worth $2,500 mm -hmm. because of the drop in the cryptocurrency. So our uh, five Sigma can get, we can take that payment and convert it instantaneously so we don't lose the value overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a protection uh, for the investors right. as well. So, but all these folks have to be SEC and FINRA regulated and uh, they have to be under their auspices as well as us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to, we have to, you know, we have rules and regulations we have to adhere by. Certain things we can say, certain things we can't say. Um, we can't promise investors they're going to make a million dollars, even though you can look at the numbers. Like the market that we're going into, um, uh, Citibank issued a report and said that market is an untapped market mm -hmm. and it's worth $1.5 trillion for whoever takes on that market. Wow. Now, how much could you make in that market if you were the catalyst and driver behind uh, bringing the opportunity to that market? Well, Citibank says $1.5 trillion. I said, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it I didn't say it. Citibank said it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and city and the city group is um they have they're in two hundred countries and they're they're, they're a multi trillion dollar op operation, mm -hmm. so I think they know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. um, and that's where you know we picked up on the idea. We said like, wait a minute, it's in the book. It's it's mm -hmm. like one point five trillion dollar market untapped. You know, Fannie Mae and the Home Ownership Council of America said it's ten million plus who can't get the mortgages, who are in this market. And it's like, well, if you put those two together, that's a pretty heck of a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, who wants to join me in this business? <laughs> who wants to become an owner of I Have a Dream Home uh, mm -hmm. by investing and becoming uh, a stockholder, a shareholder um, in the company? And let's build that and let's start tackling that market, delivering homeownership opportunities to the American citizens creating generational wealth opportunities for those who are purchasing the homes, creating generational wealth opportunities for those who are investing, who also make a profit on the investment because there's money to be made in lending. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're not leaving the money on the table. Uh, we're just being responsible. So we said, let's create a proprietary mortgage lending platform, sort of different than the others. Uh, one of the pillars in our proprietary mortgage lending platform that we want to deliver is um, in the current structure, if somebody purchases a home and they're in the home, let's say, for 10 years, and they're paying their mortgage time every month and a medical emergency comes up and they can no longer pay for their home. Mm -hmm. and But um, they might recover in two years, three years down the road. Uh, mortgage companies don't care. They will foreclose on you and they will put you in the streets. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, that's not socially conscious. Mm -hmm. We want to be socially conscious. Mm -hmm. If you have to, if a situation arose 
and you got into a foreclosure situation, when you invest through our proprietary mortgage lending platform, we have an investment hedge where we put aside mm -hmm. for you. So if something happens like that, and we, we would be able to deliver to you a check that could give you an upstart. Maybe you have to go and move into a smaller unit, into an apartment, into, we, we, we just don't put you in the street. Yeah. We don't say like your 15 years of investment is uh, uh, just gone up in smoke, poof, it's gone. It's like, that's not nice. And it's like, why would we do that to our own people? Mm -hmm. So that's one of our proprietary, one of the pillars in our proprietary mortgage lending platform. We have a social uh, consciousness in, in, in our structure that, and that comes from my uh, um, background. As I said, my father being the director of direct action and nonviolent education for Dr. King, being in the social movement, uh, caring about the American uh, citizen. Um, it's in my DNA. It's in, in the board members' DNA. And uh, we care. And it's it's easy to do. You can make a profit caring. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You don't have to make it all. You know. You don't have to take every crumb that's on the master's table. You know. You right. can leave some so somebody else can eat and have a day in the sun. And um, that's that's our, our our belief as part of our, our, our movement strategy to make sure that well we deliver a good product, but also deliver a socially conscious product. Yes, absolutely. And just even speaking to that, because you're such an innovator of like what you've been able to create and joining forces with everyone. But I love the social component, too, of just being conscious of the individual that's going into that home, the family that's going into that home and not leaving them stranded if they're unable to pay or life circumstances, because I think that happens in every life there's something that happens, but how do you navigate that? And there is such a component to that. And I think that just really makes it so well-rounded of what has been created and what will continue to transpire. And I'm curious, what has been maybe one or two success stories that you could share with us about I Have a Dream Home? Uh, the, uh, because we're in the structuring mode, yeah. the successes are, again, going through the compliance, Yeah, <laughs> actually building the five-star five hotel. You yes. know, that's, that's, you, you don't know the difficulties. We've been building the structure for two years. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like, like, you know, you, you go and you stand in these five top five-star hotels and you get a penthouse and you pay the money and you go to the top and you enjoy yourself. But mm -hmm. the work that it took to put that foundation and, and stack those floors up on top of each other so that you could enjoy it. Um, that's been an undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 there's a lot of different components. And so the success in our eyes yeah. is, is staying, staying on task, yes. not being, not being, um, not losing faith mm -hmm. um, in the process. Um, because sometimes like you go and you knock on the door and you know, you just need this piece of paper and there's someone who could deliver this piece of paper uh, to you because they have a pen sitting right next to them. Uh, but yeah, they won't pick up the pen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, why won't you pick up that pen? It's like, because I'm in charge. And it's like, but you need to pick up that pen. We need that paper. And mm -hmm. it's like to, to navigate and even go through those uh, situations and come out uh, victorious because we love people. So like I said, we didn't we don't see FINRA. We don't see anybody as our adversary. We see him um, as our advocate. So mm -hmm. we just we just say, OK, you don't want to pick up your pen. And then the next day, we'll send them a gift. And mm -hmm. what would be the gift? It'd be a box of new pins. <laughs> 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 then they look and they call you and say, I got your pins. And I said, oh, you did? They said, yeah, you can come pick your paper up. <laughs> and we're best buddies. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> so and you I... don't, those are the successes. You don't get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Just know that. People are people for whatever reason they do what they yeah. do and how they do it. And you just got to love them in spite of themselves and mm -hmm. in spite of yourself. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> well said. And I so appreciate your transparency because I think it, it takes a village. It takes work to build something great and it doesn't happen overnight. And it's a testament. You said it's been a progress of two years and it's continuing to grow and build. Mm -hmm. And I think it is amazing the structures you're putting in place and it does take time. And I think that's a conception. I think people are starting to realize things don't happen overnight. They take time oh. and <laughs> consistency and patience and putting pen to paper uh, and being able to make things happen. And I'm curious, what are maybe two or three tips you could give individuals that are on this entrepreneurial journey that you've experienced building businesses, all the experiences you've had that have really lent into the lessons that you learned? Absolutely. Absolutely. As an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. You, you cannot enter into an entrepreneur endeavor mm -hmm. to make money. It can't be purpose because you'll never make money. You have to enter into it because you want to provide a service to someone, some community, and it has to be something you love. So if you just go and just provide a service and that's your, your modus operandi, um, the resources come naturally, but if you go on to make money, um, there's, there's an energy shift in the atmosphere yeah. that puts a block up that you don't even know about. And it, it keeps you from being able to penetrate the hearts and minds of those you're trying to serve. Because there's an old saying, only that which comes from the heart can reach the heart. And yeah. people know. So, and I always tell folks, I say in entrepreneurs, because I, I, I teach a little, I say, when you walk into a room, somebody walks into a room and they're all angry. And they, you feel it. And it causes you to tighten up your shoulders and you, you hope when they don't look at you and just keep on moving. And it's like, but they never said anything to you, but you feel that energy. That's real energy. So that energy is prominent in the atmosphere at all times. So when you're an entrepreneur, again, only that which comes from the heart can reach the heart. So do something you love to do. Be about service to the people, to the community, whatever that is. And then the resources will come. And that's, that's, that's a valuable tip that I would say to any entrepreneur. You love it. Be about the service and let the money take care of itself. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it's just funny when you said like somebody walks in angry or upset, like you feel that energy. And I feel like energy is present even before we speak and just how we show up in the room, how we are serving people versus looking at the money aspect, because it's putting your heart and soul, just like what you've done for I Have a Dream Home of being able to pour your heart and soul into these homeowners that you want to help and all your team as well and continuing to see that grow and the what you can really help accomplish in this world because it's definitely something that's needed and it's something that you filled the gap but it's because you care about it and it will transpire in that beautiful aspect because you care because you're putting in the energy because you have individuals that are on that same mission as you as well because I think that energy shift of when people are all on that same mission you can help more people it's mm -hmm. contagious and that's that's the key mm -hmm. coming together community yes it's like community we, when we when we could when we come together and this it's, it's always example they use it in in the political arena mm -hmm. we know we're always fighting the democrats and the republicans right yeah. <laughs> but as when a catastrophe happens the american citizens they forget about all that and they go and they attack that catastrophe when they get it done and they they dig out yeah. and that's always a beautiful thing to me it's like, you know, it's like, it's sad that it has to be like only when it's like, you know, a catastrophe, a natural disaster or something. Why can't we be like that every day to each other? And it's like, it's like, so the catastrophes kind of come and go and they give us those moments, you know, and um, um, being, you know, playing sports a, a, a lot during my lifetime. Uh, that's another arena where things are very, um, very uh, conforming to to the arena of love, um, yeah. because you, you you know you're all men. You're on a basketball team, and a guy scores a basket, and you 
smack them on the on the rear end, and it's in this like it's everybody knows what that is. You know, it's it's like you you competitive after the game, y'all jump and run and hug each other and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then after the game is over, you go out in the public, and the guy would be scared to death to hug some, another man. And it's mm-hmm. like, what was that? But y'all just was hugging on the court. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, but that was in the heat of that. No, that was love. And if we can extend that outwards into the community, that would go a long ways yeah. uh, in our, in our uh, development. So that just coming together and, 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 and being loving and um and that's that's and 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 if I may digress one more one more second. Yeah. I, I was watching some of your videos and I see the women that you have on your platform and that you're a psychologist and it's like like I see. I see the beauty that's emanating in all your interviews mm. and, and how people respond to it. And it's, it's to me, it's like just a beautiful thing and, and, and absolutely needed in the environment, what you do, because that brings the balance from the, all the negativity that's out there. Mm. And that balance is what keeps us moving forward as a nation. I, I, that's, that's what keeps us in balance mm. and keeps us from, from injuring each other beyond repair. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. Definitely received that. And I think it's important what you are doing and what the movement you are doing with I Have a Dream Home. And I'm curious, what do you foresee in the next few years with I Have a Dream Home? The mission, the company, every helping homeowners, what do you see? Okay. In the next few years, yeah. I see us being able to First, we have to raise this five million dollars. So, yeah. you know, investors, we did those five thousand, one thousand investors. And they can go to our website, www.ihaveadreamhome.gold. Uh, we use gold.com, G-O-L-D. And the reason we use gold, because gold is the standard bearer for wealth. And uh, the, we always say the roads are paved with gold. So let's drive and get our mission accomplished. So we want to um, uh, raise those $5 million to be able to get into the arena appropriately and then we see us being able to deliver the $300 million for the first, um, within the first 12 months to the community and homeownerships. Only takes quite as it's kept three underwriters on staff to get that out to the community. Yeah. So we see that um, uh, building that, and you got to have a certain amount of reserve, which is mm-hmm. kind of what uh, Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank didn't have, why they collapsed. Mm. Um, but you got to have a certain amount of reserve when it comes to mortgage with the leverage uh, factors. And yeah. then we want to deliver that $300 million, returning it a profit to our investors. Then we want to raise up another $5,000 and do it again and yeah. do it again and do it again. That's creating the generational wealth. And we want to double our capacity every year. So we want to do $300 million the first year. The second year, we want to do $600 million. And then in the third year, we want to do 1.2 billion, deliver that to the community. Yeah. And mind you, that still only addresses 400, 4,000 home buyers. Wow. That's all that addresses. Because you got to remember, every $300,000 is about, I mean, $300 million is only about uh, 1,000 home buyers. You see, yeah. so and that's why I said we can never tackle that 10 million marketplace in our lifetime, but we can make a dent in it. And mm-hmm. so that's where we want to be in the next three years. We want to make a dent 300 million first year, 600 million the second year mm-hmm. and uh, 1.2 billion the, the, the uh, third year. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, mm-hmm. uh, seven, eight. So maybe like 8000 homeowners. But with that said. We also want to create a wealth in another way because we want to be able to uh, have folks create in their um, sort of like a franchise. Mm -hmm. Like in your area, you become a part of home. I have a dream home and everybody in that particular area, you service them. Yeah. And then we create these these areas and these, these hubs where folks now we reduplicating ourselves. Yes. So now we can make a bigger dent. So let me show you how you do that so that you can do what we're doing where you're at and uh, we can 
exponentially uh, grow uh, the business, but also exponentially attack the problem. Yeah. So that's what I see us over the next three years and um, going into the next two years after that, five years. Wow. I'm so excited for this because I just, I see the potential and I see what you're doing. And I think it, you're right. It's a den and even the numbers, it just like puts it in perspective of how much work is to be done and can help. And it's just that process of not giving up and continuing to persevere and making sure the investors are there and the money's there to help the homeowners. But even like 8,000 homeowners, when we're talking 10 million that could still get a home, it's crazy. The numbers of really understanding but being able to create that dent and be able to move forward and help those, but then mm -hmm. branching it out to creating franchises and business and pouring money back into the community as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it's about. And that's what's really going to allow that to have the home, have the business or the franchise and continue to grow and leave back a legacy for family and those to come as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I've been so enjoying this conversation, Reverend. But before we move on, I would love for you to just share where people can find you, find I Have a Dream Home. I know you already gave the website, but we're going to link everything below. But if you could let us know again. Okay. If you go to our website, everything's right there. Tons of educational materials as well. We've been doing newsletters for those two years while we were building this hotel. So um, five-star five hotel. So you, you see plenty of information on our website, www. I have a dream home dot gold and everything's right there and invest buttons and everything. And when you become an investor, something that's very important to know, mm -hmm. um, you get, you get like a bank account, you get, you mm -hmm. get, so you can see it. It's, and then you come back once you register and you put your investment in, you get your stock, you come back, there's an invested login button. So you can log in just like you log into your bank account and see your, your investments. You can see your stocks. You can see, so, so this thing was really structured, you know, properly and think, you know, uh, not to the professionals that we partnered with to, to bring us to this level of excellence. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to make sure that we delivered a, a solid product and that the people would be respectful of it in terms of the, the, the class that uh, was put behind it because every one of our partners is a class act and it's Capital Group Corcon X, uh, Secure Transact, Five Sigma, Enterprise uh, Bank and Trust. And of course, our uh, host of CPAs, uh, starting with Joan Williams. Uh, we have a board of directors. Uh, we look at our board of directors. We have like six MBAs on our board of directors. Um, folks have been highly educated and in, 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 uh, that's very important uh, for not only getting the job done, but also uh, building up trust uh, uh, in the community and with folks who would be interested in joining us and helping us get this uh, American task done. That's what we're here for. We, 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 wanna, we wanna be a part of the American dream and, and, and keep it going. Yes, and I love that you are and what you all are doing to really just make it more easy to accept and accessible for a homeowner to buy a home that is ready to purchase. But I so appreciate everything you, your team, the investors that are doing in this world. And I'm so honored to have had you on today to share your time, your energy, your beautiful spirit with us as well. But thank you so much for being here today, Reverend Quanama. Thank you. Appreciate you, Dr. Caroline. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. What was the biggest takeaway? And we will see you on the next video.